Living with machines has used computational methods at the core of everything, whether it's trying to understand bias in a hundred billion words worth of newspapers, whether it's trying to understand how the use of land and, and where people lived changed when the railways arrived. Computational methods has been at the core of what we do. The scale of the data in Living With Machines is quite unusual, uh, unique in fact, in any project that I know of in, um, in the Turing. Just the sheer scale of, of data that we're working with and the diversity of the types of data. So uh, we work with um, historical newspaper data. Um, it's well over 20 terabytes um, once it's been um, processed uh, with OCR, optical character recognition software. Uh, that produces XML files, and we, we have a large, large quantity of those. Then we've been working with uh, digitized uh, maps, ordnance survey maps from the 19th century, uh, as well as census records, um, and many other smaller scale uh, textual sources. So the Living With Machines database uh, is a way of bringing together all of these data sets that have been uh, with great meticulous detail uh, processed and organized uh, across the Living With Machines project. Which is a reproducible way of taking structured data, but that might be a little hard for humanities researchers to access and process that into a more digestible form. Scans of newspapers, titles, extra metadata, many elements that could be so helpful for future research and would take so long for someone to reinvent that wheel. The sources we work with in Living With Machines are amazingly valuable, and that means we need to store them in a trusted research environment. Now, the Turing has an open source solution to that called the Data Safe Haven. The Data Safe Haven is a secure environment which you can access data that in our case is copyright protected. With safeguards and controls to minimize the risk of any kind of leakage of data. The data that we received was never born digital. It was historic data. And in the digitization process, perhaps as images of newspaper pages were turned into computer text, mistakes were often made. You know, newspaper type is very, very small. Uh, and there were also issues around um, handwritten data, for example, in census records. Everything's been transcribed uh, by hand. It's quite easy for a human being to spot these mistakes, but for a machine, even an intelligent machine, uh, to, uh, to spot them. And, and again, at, at scale, and to spot all of the, the different possible anomalies is, is a real challenge. One of the things that I care about the most has been the research around this image. So a method for basically identifying that two th pieces of text are actually referring about the same thing, but they are simply written in different ways because there's noise given the digitization process. The digital research infrastructure is really where it's at. That is, underpins absolutely everything we've done on this project. And by that I mean the data and the high performance computing. But they're useless without the third aspect, which is skills. We need people to drive it. We need people to bring new research questions because it's all about those new questions. We have developed so many skills over the course of the project, so many packages, and uh, in spreading those into, <laughs> into the world, into the open source society, um, and, and uh, the ways that people work with these tools, uh, we're building a larger community of users that, that can learn from these skills, that can continue to build on them. I think it's just so important to teach and learn uh, digital methods and software engineering techniques within digital humanities. You can find new insights, um, automate the boring parts, and also work at a much bigger scale than a, a, a person working on their own would be able to. But on the other end, it's also important because they need to become more and more independent from the core computer science community. We don't want to have historians or literary uh, scholars depending on team of computer scientists, but we want them to be moving independently and learn how to collaborate in a fruitful way with computer scientists. For me, the humanities frames everything around us. 
as people. It lets us understand ambiguity, missing data, and how to deal with different perspectives of different truths. It's through that that we can properly really ask questions of our data sets and how representative they might be of real world. Those investments shouldn't just be for one project. I would love to see that digital research infrastructure scaled up. Can this be for national level? Can we join with others who have got similar questions to make savings? Savings in terms of time, in terms of energy. Together, we can build a digital research infrastructure that will really put the UK at the cutting edge. I have a bit of Macbeth. Is that a Macbeth chart? If you want all your problems to disappear, just go to the command line, type in rm space minus rf, and all your problems will be gone. With it, everything else will be gone, but maybe it's time to go to the pub. <laughs>